more at dawn, the rains retreat ends. Of course, here we don't have much rain during the retreat. But the retreat isn't all about rain. It's about living in one place, living together. And benefiting from the practice of living together. The Buddha designed the monkhood so that the monks would have time off by themselves, wandering around for part of the year, and then living together in one place for part of the year. As soon as you get the advantage both of solitude and of living with admirable friends. And it's always good to reflect on why we need to live together as part of the training. People get off on their own and they can get caught in these really weird feedback loops. go spinning off in one direction. They get focused on one thing and they just get obsessed with it. So it's good to have people to get you out of those loops. Of course, you want to look for the right people, people who actually have the right values. People who see the value of training the mind. The value of digging down into the mind and seeing why there is, still is suffering. Even though everything we do is aimed at happiness, we still suffer. And if we don't keep the question of suffering foremost in mind, particularly the suffering the mind causes itself through its craving and clinging and ignorance, it's so easy to get pulled off into other interests. and the big thing that you're responsible for gets abandoned. So the reason we have a group here, the people focused on the practice, is to keep us from getting into the weird mind states that come when you're off living alone and the weird mind states that come when you live in ordinary society. So as we practice, remember that we're depending on one another, and we also want to be dependable for one another. To try to be a good example to others, so they feel inspired to work on their minds as well. And this way everybody benefits from living together. Now for some of us there will be the opportunity in the next several months to Go off and be alone. See, so we want to learn how to take advantage of that as well. We can put aside your ordinary responsibilities and look 100% at your own mind as you go through the day. And John Fuang always said that it was good when you're living alone to act as if you're living with others, and when you're living with others to act as if you're living alone. In other words, when you're alone, have a set schedule for yourself. Figure out a schedule that works with your bodily rhythms and then stick to it. When you're with others, try to keep the conversations to a minimum. There's a story in the canon when the Buddha got upset with the monks in Gosambi. Maybe upset is too strong a word, but he just got realized that his staying there was not going to accomplish anything. The monks were split into two big factions, and no matter how hard he tried to get them to get back on peaceful terms, they said, basically, you stay out of this. You can just be the Buddha. We're the ones who will be responsible for this. So he left. Went into the forest, and he met three monks who were living together. And he asked them how they divided up their time. And basically, for every five days they would meet and have Dharma discussion well into the night. 
But the rest of the time they hardly talked. Even when there were chores to be done, they would try to use hand signals so as not to disturb one another's peace. So that's an ideal to keep in mind. So the real test of your Dharma practice is the ability to practice well when you're with others and when you're alone. There are difficulties in each, and there are advantages to each. And you learn by dealing with those difficulties. So remember that both sides have their value. One of the advantages of having a range retreat the last three months is it gives you an opportunity to ramp up your practice. So look back on these three months now. What particular practices did you take on where you're pushing yourself a little bit more than you normally do? And by now you should begin to see some of the advantages of that. And this is John Munn to older John Cha. We want to keep our practice in the shape of a circle. If you find that these practices help, now there's nothing to stop you from continuing them even after the rains retreat is over. After all, th three months is just one quarter of the year. And if you ramp up your practice only during one three month period out of each year, it's not the shape of a circle, it's just a little arc. It starts and then it stops, and it doesn't build up any momentum. What you want to practice is that goes around the year and builds up momentum like the particles in those big atom smashers. They route them around and around and around, and as they go around and around, the practice builds, you know, the, the particles build up more momentum. And they get a lot of power. So look at the last three months and see what you've learned from whatever practice you took on or practices you took on. And see which ones you feel are worth carrying on with. Because three months gives you time to test things out to see what's working, what's not working. And if it's working, don't give it up. Don't put it aside and start up again next July. Just keep it going throughout the year. So you can get the power of one of those colliders. That's how you really take advantage of this time. So it's not just a ceremony, it's not just a custom. It's your laboratory for testing different practices and then taking on the ones that work. Because the time of our lives just keeps growing shorter and shorter all the time. Death is approaching, so you want to have something positive to take in that direction as you go forward. You want the momentum of a good practice, you want the momentum of a trained mind. That's the only thing that will keep you from getting smothered by aging, illness, and death. 